So some things occurred to me. I'm seeing that there's a whole complaint about how Laventil's residents suffer from the national stigmatization of the area. I have been to Laventil once in my life. It's very beautiful up on the hills. The breeze, the quality of the air, it has a special thing to it. And you understand why it's called Laventille. It has that windy, zephyr-like ambiance that really is more akin to the idea of a tourist destination than to a killing zone. But I remember a complaint my mother has often made to me about moderate Muslims. She says, why don't they come out and condemn the actions of the so-called Islamist fundamentalists? Why don't they come out and say, these are the infidels? They claim to save Allah, but they don't. And there's another community with which I've recently become familiar, Maraca St. Joseph, in which elements like what has happened in Laventil have begun or have long since begun to take shape. And it makes me consider the same question my mom raise, raises. You know, why didn't the moderate ones, the ones who aren't criminals, the ones who don't deserve the stigma, why didn't they come out and condemn the behavior of those who do deserve it? Because silence is often seen as complicity and consent. Whether or not it is fear is another matter. The fact is that if you are near where there is bullying, where there is rampage, where there is injustice, where there is oppression, where there is what we call senseless killing and victimization and violence, if you live there and you say nothing, you don't find a means and a way to speak out courageously and say, I'm not of this, this is not me, this is not what my family values are. Then, is the national community wrong in thinking that all of you should be lumped together? We have to find ways, just like in the Black Lives Matter movement, to make it clear where we stand. We meaning the persons who are good, the persons who are not like them. We need to find ways to speak out so that the national or the international community can be clear. These are not like those. We don't stand for that. We don't encourage that. We don't support that. We don't condone that at any time and we're not afraid to say so. We may not want to call names because we don't want to be killed, but at least we can get up and say, I don't support this. I don't support that. I mean, something has to be done. How long are we really going to sit and say, well, I'm scared to say anything, and then afterwards turn around and say, it's not fair that you stigmatize us all. That's, that's what my, I told my mom about moderate Muslims. I said it wasn't fair for her to think all Muslims are the same. And that's what she told me. The moderate Muslims do not speak out against the fundamentalist extremist ones. What ca answer can I give to that? Perception is reality. And you have to fight against the natural human tendency to make conclusions and draw inferences from evidence that appears before you. Before you, the human being, that is. So that being said, I hope that this gives some people food for thought on your Saturday. Stigma, I'm tired of hearing about stigma. I have a stigma against me. We all may have, have become famous for certain types of negative things. What is our job is to make sure that we act and speak and make our presence in the public space one that clearly and consistently says no to whatever we don't want to be a part of. It is the information age, it is the technological age, it is possible.